So let's see what evidences we have uh, here regarding both whether topical antibiotics has to be used or only COVID and iodine is enough. So it goes, uh, and then there was a question that whether antibiotics alone or COVID and iodine or both, if we, are, if we use both, are additive. So basically, this published uh, this is published in 18, 1985. So in this study, the antibiotic of that time, neosporin, was used in combination with COVID and COVID and iodine. Even both were used separately. Also, it both could reduce the uh, bacterial load in conjunctiva, but when they were combined together, then the, the bacterial load was reduced much much lower levels. Further strengthening, then the real test of topical antibiotics was when people and clinicians they are trying, they were started, you know, uh, started to see whether they, these topical antibiotics they achieve MIC levels above 90 or 50. So this was a study uh, published in 2003 when ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin and topical antibiotics they were used and uh, it was tried to see whether uh, in aqueous humor they could achieve MIC levels above 90. So it was found that both the antibiotics could excellently achieve MIC 90 or MIC 50 above levels, but both failed to achieve these levels in vitreous. Further to strengthen the similar kind of picture in 2005, archive paper published of today's antibiotics that we use nowadays, moxifloxacin, it could also reach an interior chamber pretty well and the MIC 90 and above levels were easily reached but again this also failed to achieve uh, more than the MIC 90 levels in uh, vitreous in for, but many organisms. Further strengthening and uh, it was checked for leofloxacin, ofloxacin, topical antibiotics, similar results both could achieve fantastic levels in anterior chamber but failed to achieve in posterior chamber. And then there was a study on even choosing topical versus oral leofloxacin and surprisingly oral leofloxacin could achieve MIC levels above 90 but topical couldn't in vitreous particularly. Entry chamber they both could do. So this was the time you know when the, uh, when the era was changing especially for medical retina a lot of transitional studies like Anchor, Marina, Macrogen trials were going on. So in spite of having evidences from the literature that topical antibiotics they do not reach above MIC 90 levels in vitreous, in spite of having that Anchor, Marina, Macrogen trials all they had topical antibiotic use in their protocol. Even in 2008, when the PET survey in ASRS was done, even when it was asked, 40% of retina specialists they were using pre-operative topical antibiotics, while 80% of them they were using post antivirus antibiotics. Why is that? <coughs> maybe because it was a thought that maybe it's not useful, but it's not harmful. So that was a thought that time. So things got changed. Where, why I was mentioning 2009? When a wonderful and uh, methodical group from DRCRnet, when they started anal analyzing their data in the, from their prior two to three studies, and then they came out that rather than giving benefit, in topical antibiotics might cause harm. They might cause endophthalmitis. And that was the time when DRCRnet decided what they call is minimalist approach. What the minimalist approach is is that they use. They stress on that you need to use, there are three important things, topical COVID and iodine, estriol, lid speculum and topical anesthetics, rest you need not to use and from 2009 they have sh shifted all their protocols and they are following their minimalist approach. Further to strengthen their data in 2011, uh, 12, which study they published, they have analyzed their data further when they started minimalist approach. Again. Out of 8027 injections, they had 7 cases of endophthalmitis, out of 7, uh, 6 were on use of topical antibiotics, while 1 was without topical antibiotics, using only powder and iodine. And uh, this was the only paper that I could not include my book in my book because book was already published by JP by that time. But wonderful sample size. It is a sample size of 117,171 cases. So once they analyzed that the overall the incidence rate was quite low, 0.038%. But out of that, if you, when they uh, checked it for the cultural proven endophthalmitis, cultural proven <coughs> endophthalmitis were 0.017% cases when topical antibiotics was in use. And while cases where topical antibiotics was not used, it was 0.011%. And when the odds ratio was calculated, odds were going in the favor that topical antibiotic use might be the trend to cause end of thalmitis. So, but what is missing here? 
we do not have data from the developing world except Dr. Uh, uh, Sarvanandi has pointed out the study at Arbel. We need to have a sample size even more than 10,000 because the rate of uh, endothermal is quite low. Especially, you know, when there were a lot of studies like you can use eloquent, MS means and all those kind of things, but the studies were discarded by learned people because the studied had didn't had enough power to say that that you you can just uh, you can bypass the guidelines which are standard guidelines by the US for OPS 797. So we do not have real robust data from developing developing world yet. Now I'll again, uh, now you have seen the data whatever I have presented. Now I'll again rephrase the questions. Now after hearing uh, you know seeing all this data. Whether you will change your practice, how many of you will change your practice and you use only powder and iodine, no antibiotics? Any hands? Okay. And still, how many of you would use topical antibiotics and powder and iodine together? Okay, so we are divided. So anyway, rather than keeping you confused, that's what I have written in the book also, that at the end we should not be confused. So. Practitioners who want to practice evidence-based medicine, no need to use topical antibiotics. Practitioners who are worried cannot sleep quietly by avoiding topical antibiotics can use topical antibiotics. And this gives you a slight protection regarding the medical legal aspect also, being a slight higher rate of endothermitis in this country. But don't forget, povidone iodine is a must with a proper retention time. Thank you.